morning, Good Hope. Good morning. Good morning, Good Hope. Good morning. Good morning. Good hope. Good morning. And good morning to all of you who have tuned in in the virtual space on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anyone other than me glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? The Bible says there in Psalms 24, it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein. The world, excuse me, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come, shall in. come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of glory. He is the King of glory. Amen. Good morning. Who is this King of glory? Strong and mighty. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. God's and angels.
Reverend, you feel that homie out there? You got some singles out there. Well, I wasn't in no hurry because uh, hey, we need some of that. But, uh, well, we'll give up. Y'all come on with me now. Jesus, 
Satan has no dominion and no authority over your people right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our pastor right now, Father God. Continue to touch him right now from the top of his head, Lord, to the sole of his feet. Continue to heal his body, Father God. To continue to strengthen him right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Father God, bless his wife and family right now, Lord. Give them the strength that they need in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Father, God bless them right now. Father, God, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord, and we magnify your holy and precious name. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 If you turn to the back of your program, we have our Declaration of Faith, which we will all read together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we just want to take this time to welcome all of our visitors, anyone in the house of hope or tuning in virtually for the first time. We want to welcome you to our worship experience on today. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Raymond Terrell, his wife, Lady Barbara Terrell, and the entire Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We welcome you, and we pray that in some way that you will be encouraged and inspired by our worship experience on today. Come and visit with us again. Don't let this be your last time. Come on back and worship with us, for we are the church that sits on the hill. We're hoping Christ never, never dies. So we welcome you once, we welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, people of God, things that we want to remember, on August the 28th, we will celebrate our 143rd church anniversary. Amen. We are asked to give the seed offering of $143. At this time, we want to remain mindful of our prayer request. Mother Kenner, Ruby Scott, Mother Cook, Mother Hoover, Mary Norwood, James and Joyce Burt, James and Don Smith, victims of the mass shootings. We're going to remember these families, the Woodard, the Ellis, the Bledsoe, the Embry, the Lewis, the Johnson, the Hoover families. We want to remember the elected officials and all deployed service members. We also want to remember one another in prayer, amen? amen? We know that COVID is back up on the rise, so we want to also pray for those who have been once again affected by COVID-19, amen? amen? We want to keep ourselves and others healthy and safe, so let us do what we must do to do that, amen? amen. Continue to wash our hands, wear our masks, practice social distancing, whatever we need to do to protect ourselves, but we also want to encourage those who have not taken the vaccination. Please get that vaccination. Amen? Amen. 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 So I myself have been vaccinated and boosted. Amen? Amen. And I'm still alive and well. Amen. Praise be unto God. Amen? Amen? I know some people are afraid of that vaccination, but it will actually help you. Amen? Amen. It may not prevent us from getting COVID, but it will help us to be able to fight it better. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we want to remain mindful of that and stay in prayer for those who are recovering from the COVID-19 virus. Amen. Amen. Also, we want to remember our thought for the week, people of God. It says, 
however much or little you have. Thank you is always a more powerful prayer than I need more. Amen. Amen. That reference scripture is coming from Psalms 86 and 12. Amen. Amen. Also, I have a thank you card coming from um, Sister Tiffany Sago Gray. She says, your prayers were miraculous. Amen. So uh, she had asked Good Hope to be in prayer for her as she was going through her health issues. And uh, I, I take it that she has reaped the benefits of our prayers. Amen. Amen. How many know that prayer still works? Amen. How many know that there's power in prayer? Yes. Let us never cease to pray. Amen. Amen. Let us never cease to pray. Amen, Sister Malone. I forgot to bring my card, but I wanted to just tell the church thank you for your prayers, your calls, your love, your texts. Amen. God bless you. We'll continue to pray for you and your family, Sister Malone, as you all continue to mourn the loss of your dear loved ones. But we all know that earth has no sorrow, Amen. that Amen. heaven Amen. cannot Amen. heal. Yes. So we pray that God will continue to wrap his loving arms of comfort, strength, and peace around you and your family. Amen. 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 We thank God for our pastor being with us on today. Amen. 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 Thank God for touching him and healing him and blessing him to be with us on today. Pastor is ready to preach, amen? Right. And I'm gonna get out of the way because it's preaching time, amen? amen. And how many of y'all are ready to eat the word on this morning? Amen. amen. You all pray and pastor will preach, amen? amen? After the next selection, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our overseer and pastor, Pastor Raymond Terrell. Hear ye him. Y'all don't mind if I go back this morning. I just like to stay in I, Not that I want to be in the back, but I just like old church music. Now. a mother for somebody and Lord Jesus you've been her father
take it home with me. I'm feeling a little sick this morning.
something about the name Jesus. Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Most holy and kind of God, our Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Traveling grace and certainly for your healing. As we come now to celebrate, worship, and praise. Bless your name, Jesus. And to lift up the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh gracious God, that you will continue to fill this place with your train. Allow the Heavenly Father praises to go up in order that blessings will come down. I heard somebody declare earlier. Had not been for the Lord uh -huh. on our side, where would we be? So, Father, we say thank you, thank you Lord. for the small things as well as the large. Yes. We say thank you. Yes. God, we look to the hills from which comes our help. Yes. Our help cometh from the Lord, yes. who have made heaven and earth. Yes. Come now, Lord Jesus. Hold this, your humble servant, in the hollow of your hand. We ask, O oh God, that you will allow the shadow of the cross to fall across me, the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Father, we understand the journey that we were on this last time that we were here, but it was only you who kept us safe. Only you who allowed the doctor more medicine in the hem of your God that we allowed to come and stand behind this sacred desk one more time to say thank you. Now God we pray that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Lord we ask that you let it come be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord my strength and my redeemer is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Matter of fact, if you don't mind, stand on your feet and give the Lord the law. Give the law. Praise him like you praise him. Praise him like this is the last time. He's been good. Isn't that what the songwriter said? He's been good. <laughs> He's been mighty good. And he deserves our praise. Amen. God bless you, sister. Him. Amen to the ministers, the officers, the deacons, the mothers, the ushers that stand on the door. We declare to you it is good for us to be here. Amen. We were on the road last night, my wife and I, and we were doing pretty good time. But then as we closed in on Parkville, there was an accident. And we didn't get home till about 2.30 this morning. But God is good. Yes, he is. And we thank God for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Amen. We, think, we, we know that God can do anything but fail. Continue to pray that God will continue to uh, hold his people in the, in the palm of his hands. And we are just grateful unto God for what he has done. There is a word from the Lord, amen, and I invite your attention to 2 Kings in the Old Testament, 2 Kings, the 7th chapter, amen. I invite you in your time of meditation to read 6 and 7 in its entirety, and we'll be lifting up just a few verses, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, 7th 
chapter. Second Kings 7 chapter. Amen. Why are you finding that? It's good to see Sister Lynette in the house. Amen. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless your Mother Kenneth's daughter. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that she's gone through some medical issues, and we thank God that she's here in the house Amen. this morning. Amen. God is good. Amen. If you find it, say amen. amen. God bless you. I'm going to be reading from the third verse of that seventh chapter in 2 Kings. Amen. And we'll go through until the Lord says that's enough. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? <laughs> If we say uh, we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Assyrian camp, uh, to their surprise, <laughs> no one was there. My God. For the Lord had called the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. Uh, so they said to one another, look. Uh, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Uh, therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, <laughs> and they fled for their lives. My God. That's enough. <laughs> Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Fix it, Reverend. Enjoy Amen. Yourself. Back in the sixties, I don't don't want to don't want to date myself and don't want to call anybody out of their age. Amen. But back in the mid sixties, there were a there was a TV sitcom that was really a spinoff from uh, the Andy Griffith Show. Don't tell your age. <laughs> and this 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 show was called Goma Power. Huh? <laughs> and while, while Goma Powell was a fictional character from the fictional town of Mayberry, my brothers and my sisters, in real life, somebody said real life, real life. he was from Sylacauga, Alabama. <laughs> Amen. And his name, his real name was not Goma Powell, but his real name was Jim Naylor. But I need you to understand for the preachment of this morning, Goma, Goma, Goma was a country backwoods boy. Uh, he was as country as they come. And when Goma, when Goma found himself or found others in an unprecedented and unexpected situation, uh, he would simply declare, surprise, surprise, surprise. Don't show your age. <laughs> Amen. But that was Gomer's declaration of something that had happened that is out of the ordinary. Whether he had a hand in doing it or whether he had a hand in the situation or not, he would still declare surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> in real life, in real life, my brothers and sisters, some people, some people don't like or care for surprises. Mm -hmm. Do I have a witness? Uh, they don't want you to give them any surprise parties. Uh, they don't want any unexpected gifts. Uh, they just want things as normal as possible. Case in point, case in point, and in short, they really don't like things to change. But I need to let somebody know right through here that change will come. Right. And oftentimes change is not for 
uh, the better. But change will come. Now, now, now what I want you to sink into your spirits is that how you handle change depends on how it will come and work out for you. Now, those of us, those of us who have a relationship with God and are familiar with how God operates, we know, we know that there are times when God slips you, amen, a surprise blessing. Or he'll slip you a surprise favor. And I need you to understand when God does something for you by surprise. God will just bless you in spite of. Is there anybody here who've had a blessing from the Lord? Who've been in his favor just because? Every now and then those who are in love and who are infatuated with those who we love, we just do something just because. Every now and again, my wife fixed my favorite meal just because. Every now and then, I slip her a rose or two just because. <laughs> and then, and then, then, if we're really feeling, feeling, how do you say, if you're really feeling iffy about it, I mean, every now and then, we'll go up to Roof Crisp in Nashville. And I don't mind putting down $200. $300 for a meal for my boo. <laughs> Just because. Huh? And every now and then she said, where you going? I'm saying, surprise. 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 And God does that. He gives us a blessing when we don't least, when we least expect it. A -a Amen. And I need you to understand that whether you count that favor or blessing, amen, as being great or being small, God sees every blessing that he gives us, every ounce of favor that he gives us. God sees it as a major blessing. Simply because, my brothers and my sisters, it's God's intention that when he blesses us, he wants us to bless others. Do I have a witness? I need you to understand that, like I said earlier, if you have a relationship with God and if you are familiar with his ways and how he operates, then you know that God works in a mysterious way. Amen. His wonders to perform. I need you to understand that's not biblical, but it is biblical sense. That God does work in mysterious ways. And that his wonders, he works it all to perform what he wants for us. I like, I like it as, as Isaiah said. Isaiah says it like this. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways, uh-huh, you read it, you read it. In other words, my brothers and sisters, while we are trying to figure it out, and while we're trying to figure him out, God has already, somebody, you better help me preach it. He's already worked it out. I like how the Apostle Paul says it like this. Paul says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world uh, to put to shame the things which are mighty. I'm here to tell somebody, God works in mysterious ways. And the truth about it, whether you like it or not, God does not need our opinion. God does not need how we feel. God really does not, that does not want us to, 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 to tell him how to bless us. Why? Because he does what he does when he does it. <laughs> In other words, I've come to the conclusion at this stage in my life. I'm not the judge and God will use whomever he chooses to fulfill his will. You may be up today, but I'm here to tell you, you could be down tomorrow. 
You could be down and then God will raise you back up. Amen. Amen. But I need you to understand that whatever God does in your life, there is a reason. Whether he puts you down for a little while, he won't keep you down. He'll raise you back up. I heard somebody say, we fall down, ah, but we get up. And we get up by the power of an almighty God. I need you to understand, and my hope is this, that when God be- decides to bless you, amen, and if God decides to use you or choose you, I need you to do this. Be ye also ready. Simply because you never know how God will use you. Uh, there are times when we cross over somebody that's lying in the streets. But you don't know. God may use you to bring that person up to the place where God can bless them. And regardless of the circumstances, you want God to bless you so that you may bless others. In our focus text, in our focus text, it's a strange thing that's happening here in this narrative. Amen. We are in the midst of the ministry of the prophet Elisha, who is a protege and and student disciple of the major prophet Elijah. Now Elijah is off the scene. He's been carried up to glory, amen, in a chariot. And God raises and God promotes Elisha to be the speaker, to be his go-between between his people and the kings that are over them. At this time in the ministry of Elisha, it is in the period of Israel's history when it's known as they, they are in a divided kingdom. We find Israel in a very weakened state. We find Israel in a very uh, peculiar condition. As a result, they are open to attack by every nation that they come across. And here in this text, according to Kings, uh, Second Kings, the sixth chapter, the 24th and the 29th verse. This particular siege is orchestrated, is orchestrated by uh, Benadad, king of Syria. It is at the hand of Benadad uh, that, that the very, that a very terrible, uh, uh, despairing famine has fallen upon the land. And every, every one of God's children are affected. God's chosen people are caught in the middle of this terrible famine. The Bible gives us to know that it was so bad that they had begun to resort in cannibalism. In other words, they began to eat uh, their babies. You would not think that something like this would befall the children of God. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible lets us know that God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. That if you don't think God can do anything, (laughs) know that God knows exactly what you're going through and knows exactly how bad you think you are. And when you turn your back on God and when you tell God, I really don't need you, I can do this all by myself. God will say, okay, (laughs) I'll take my hands off of it. And when God takes his hands off of our lives, I need you to understand you find yourself in some kind of way. Do I have a witness? Amen. But God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They have resulted to cannibalism because of this terrible famine. And the king is worried. But in the middle of all of this desperation, in the middle of all this starvation, 
God sends a message to Elisha, a word to give to the king. That is, uh, it went something like this, about this time tomorrow. Sounds familiar, don't it? <laughs> when God gets ready to put a stamp, a time or a stamp, time stamp on something, he'll let you know exactly when, he'll let you know exactly where. But don't despair, my brothers and my sisters. He may not come when you want him to. <laughs> but he is right on time. And God gave Elisha the word about this time tomorrow. The famine will end, and there will be plenty in the land. I'm here to let somebody know that with God, all things, <laughs> do I have a witness? All things are possible. Uh-huh, with this famine lasting for so long, amen, and with what seemed to be no end in sight. The king did not believe the man of God and he put a bounty on his head for issuing such an unbelievable prediction. And here we are right in the midst of our text. And it says four lepers enter into this narrative of desperation and starvation. Uh, can I throw this at you? Surprise. Surprise, surprise. Four lepers. We already know about this disease. We already know how it, 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 it takes the lives of those who are infected. We already know that they have to declare within 10 feet of anybody else, leper, 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 and move on out the way. We already know that they, according to the Leviticus law, had to be put on the outside of the city in a leper colony and could not have any contact with family or with friends. But here in this desperate situation, in the history of God's people, God sent four leprous men and they come in contact with one another and they contemplate and talk to one another humanly speaking they really have no future uh, they have this terminal disease and it makes them untouchable they went into the city amen if they go into the city they will die if they stay where they are they gonna die it doesn't seem like uh, things was going to turn out in their favor. And then you got to understand exactly where they are. They are dependent on scraps that comes over the wall of the city from the enemy to be able to eat and sustain themselves in normal times. But how many of you know they're not in normal times now? How many of you know we're not in normal times now? And there is a famine in the land. I'm not talking about food and sustainability. I'm talking about the famine of the word of God. Amen. We don't hear, we don't hear people talking in the mall about the word. We don't hear people walking up and down the street about the word. And the world is starving because they need a word from the Lord. These four lepers come on the scene and for some reason God put them in his will. You need to understand, they don't mention anything about God out of their mouths. They don't mention anything about the fact that God will make a way out of no way. But they sit down and contemplate nothing but death. If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go in the city, we're going to die. And then they reason to themselves, it's better for us to go into the enemy camp. If they save us, <laughs> we live. 
If they don't, we still die. Nothing but death on their mind. Nothing but death in their clothes. Nothing but death in their smell. Have you ever been in a situation and all you can think about is death? <laughs> Have you ever been sick, so sick, so sick that you're sick and tired of being sick? And in the recessions of your mind, you ask God, God, how long must I go through this? I need you to understand that God here and answers your prayer. God sends these four lepers. And they contemplate one with the other. Now, now, now notice this. They had no idea. They had no idea of Elisha's, Elisha's, Elisha's uh, prediction. They had no idea of what the king had done, uh, had said and declared against Elisha. Elisha. Amen. They were not part of the situation at all. But yet, somebody say yet. Now, God chose them to bring about his will. Aren't you glad that God have a ram in the bush in your behalf? Huh? You have to sacrifice this and sacrifice that. I heard somebody say the other day, I'm just, I'm stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Huh? God will make a way out of no way. And when God ready to choose whom he will, he will choose them. The Apostle Paul looked at the situation like this, and he says uh, that God had placed them in as treasures in earthen vessels. Many of you don't really understand that, 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 that verse. That is that God has put something on the inside of you, <laughs> your earthen vessel. Amen. And if you got a relationship with God, you know that the scripture says, better is he that's within us than he that's in the world. You are a chosen vessel. Meet for the master's use. They had no idea what God was about to do. They had no idea what was in store for them. Our God often surprises us. His ways are above our ways. His actions are sometimes uh, unpredictable. But I need you to look at what happens in verse 5. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrians' camp, <laughs> to their surprise, no one was there. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Here it is. Uh, they made their decision to go into the Syrians' camp, the enemy's camp. <laughs> and I need you to understand that oftentimes God will allow you to ease yourself <laughs> in the midst of your enemies uh -huh. just so that he can make sure that you know uh -huh. and that I know that he will make uh, our enemies, our footstools, uh, they make their way into the enemy camp. Uh, but when they get to the enemy camp, there was nobody there. I need you to understand what happens between verse 5 and verse 6. <laughs> They've made the decision to go into the camp of the enemy. But watch God do some supernatural stuff. While they're shuffling. In their leprous clothes. <laughs> while they ease their way. To the gate of the city. Look what God does with their shuffle. Y'all don't hear my shuffle. But God took these four lepers shuffle. <laughs> and based on the silence of their shuffle, God works in mysterious ways. 
their silent leprous shuffle <laughs> fell on the ears of the enemy. And while they were shuffling their way <laughs> to the enemy's camp, <laughs> God Almighty, in the ears of the enemy, the deacon bell that shuffled became like a mighty army. <laughs> they heard chariots from the leopards shuffle. <laughs> I'm about to. Oh, glory to God. Is there anybody here who knows how to do God's shuffle? Oh, yeah. They heard chariots, but they were just shuffling. Good God Almighty, they heard great horses, but they were just shuffling simply because they made up in their mind if we sit here and do nothing we're going to die if we go into the city we're still going to die I don't know if it was a third one or the fourth one but somebody said well we got to do something we need to get off our rusty dusties and make our way to the enemy's camp how you know God is going to get you through if you don't go to <laughs> say yes uh, the enemy heard the sound of chariots the enemy heard the sound of a mighty army the enemies heard that there was a large army greater than they you read it and then they got up they left what they had and they exited the camp good God almighty I need you to understand what verse 6 says for the Lord had caused the enemy the army of the Assyrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army so they said one to another look the king of Israel has hired against us uh, kings of the Hittites, uh, kings of the Egyptians uh, to attack us. Uh, but can I, I put something right here? Parenthetically, when God gets ready uh, to move on your behalf uh, and to put you in his will, uh, put your children in his will, uh, put your grandchildren in his will, uh, put your wife in his will, uh, Put your husband in his wheel. Can I put this in your spirit? God don't need the Hittites. God don't need the Assyrians. God don't need the Egyptians. God will do what God does the best way he does. And I heard somebody say that God will make a way out of no way. Do I have a witness in the house? Good God Almighty. So look what they do. They get into the camp. The enemy has deserted the camp. So much so that whatever they had, they left it in place. And the four lepers come in. And they find nobody in the tents. They find nobody in the stalls. But good God Almighty, the words say that when they went in the tents, they found food, they found clothes, they found gold, they found silver. Good God Almighty, here it is. Surprise, surprise, surprise. God will make a way out of no way. God will use and choose who he will. And good God Almighty, the Bible says, to their surprise, no one was there. God will see you through. God will make ways out of no ways. And God did it for these 
for lepers. Now the words say that whatever they got, they ate and then they stashed it away. The silver and the gold, they hid it among themselves and hid it while nobody else can find it but them. But good God Almighty, aren't you glad there's always one who comes to their senses and realize that God has been too good for us, that God God has been good to us and that we ought to do something about the goodness of the Lord. They sat down one more time and they reasoned with themselves. This is a good thing for us. We have been blessed. The city is ours and this is a day of good things and good tidings and good God Almighty they don't even mention about God again but here they do here, here what they do they says within themselves we need to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord we need to go to the king house and let the king know that the enemy is gone and everything that the enemy has belongs to us is there anybody here who knows that the Lord will give you the things and the spoils of the enemies God will make your haters turn around God will give you what the enemy has. Why? Because it's already yours. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not the tail, but the head. We're not the borrowers, but the lenders. And I need to let you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The enemy has already counted you down. The enemy has already counted you out. But there is a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Is there anybody here who ready to get up and do the God shuffle with me? I'm shuffling towards my blessing. I'm shuffling towards my favor. I'm shuffling towards my healing. I'm shuffling towards my prosperity. I'm shuffling towards my destiny. And I need to let the devil know, devil, get the hints behind me because I'm going forward with the Lord on my side. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Surprise, surprise, surprise. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Is there anybody here who knows that he is the balm in Gilead? That he is the rose of Sharon. That he is the bright and morning star. That he is the son of the living God. Some years ago, the voices of hope had a song that they used to sing. And the song went like this. If the Lord has saved your soul, you ought to tell it. Tell it wherever you go. If the Lord has saved your soul, you ought to tell it, tell it, tell it wherever you go. If the Lord has done anything for you, is there anybody here this morning or in the virtual world that can say, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it wherever I go that I have found a Savior. And he is sweet I know. Surprise, surprise, surprise. If you love the Lord and you know how the Lord operates and you got a relationship with the Lord 
And the Lord has given you a surprise favor. And the Lord has given you a surprise blessing. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I just want you to think about how far the Lord has brought you. What hills and valleys that he's brought you through. And if you love the Lord for about three seconds, all I need you to do is just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank him. He woke you up this morning. Thank him. Food on your table. Thank him. Clothes on your back. Thank him. Close you in your right mind. Thank him. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Surprise. 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 And when you read the rest of the story, you find out that the lepers went and told the king what had happened. And they still did not believe it. But then... Somebody say, well, send proof. Huh? I don't know if they were from Missouri or not. Huh? But show me. Huh? And the king sent horsemen down to the enemy's camp and came back with the word that, yeah, (laughs) it's true. God will make a way out of no way. God will (laughs) see you through. How do you know? Because if he brings you to it, (laughs) he's going to bring you through it. And you can shout. (laughs) You can shuffle (laughs) about the fact that God brought you through. (laughs) Do I have a witness? When I was in the world, I used to dance. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I had all kinds of parties. Now that I found Jesus, now that I know how to dance in Jesus, I got another partner, and the partner is the Holy Ghost. And I don't have to have no music. I can just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And my soul gets happy. Say, thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. Surprise, surprise, surprise. God has a blessing in store for you. But as he received, as we receive our blessings, let's share those blessings and the goodness of the gospel with others. The doors of the church are open. For those here in the sanctuary who may want to stand out, stand up for God and say, Lord, here I am. Use me in thy service. If you're, vi- if you're visiting us virtually, there's a telephone number on there. You can call or text your request. Amen. And let us know that you're interested in becoming part of this family that loves the Lord. It is a glorious time. It is a time of good times. We pray, O God, that you once again pour out your blessing, pour out your spirit upon those who desire to get a closer walk with thee. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now 
that you put them in the mind of these four lepers that if we do nothing we die but let us go into the enemy camp because we are in the will of God and no weapon formed against us shall prosper so Father we ask now in the name of Jesus have thine own way O God move in a mighty way O God bless 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 this church bless the people in this church and those who are extended in our in our midst God in the name of Jesus bless us now oh God make us a blessing that we might be able to bless others and father while there is enemy while there is famine in the land while there's pestilence in the land while there's violence in the land God, we pray in the name of Jesus that it do not befall those who fall under the covering of an almighty God in the midst of this house of hope. God, in the name of Jesus, raise us up as a mighty army. Help us to learn how to shuffle towards your favor. Shuffle towards your blessings. Shuffle towards your will. And let the enemy know I'm coming. <laughs> to take back everything you've stolen from us. God, in the name of Jesus, make it so now. Heal us, make it so now. Prosper us, make it so now. In the mighty name of Jesus, take our children. Amen. And aren't you glad that God can and can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us? Aren't you glad that God is able to do all things? Aren't you glad that God never fails? Amen. Aren't you glad that God is the greatest power and we shall never be defeated? Amen. The song says the devil is a liar. God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. Amen. God will take care of our enemies and he will give us blessings and favor in unfavorable conditions. Amen. Ain't that a good God that he looks after his children. Amen. Amen. It is given time in the house of hope on this morning. Amen. Amen. This is another part of our worship experience. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a, a cheer for giver. Let us give cheerfully on today. Lift up those offerings before the Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you, Father, for blessing us the way that you do, for taking care of us, for providing for us, and for meeting us at the point of our every need. Father, we honor you. We glorify you. We bless you. And we ask, Lord, that you would take this offering and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it is. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. And, and so we, it is with that, with that, with that thought and with that uh, understanding that we want to pour into the lives of our children, of our youth, simply to let them know from whence we've come. Uh, if you've been listening to the news here lately, <coughs> over 50 something years ago, Death, the death of Emmett Till has now come up again. The very same lady that accused him, amen, of whistling at her. How old is, is she? 82 years old. And now things are turning. And now she, she wants to say, I made a mistake. Come on, those are the things that our children need to know about. Those are the things that we need to teach them, uh, that it has not always been this way, and it's not always going to be easy. There are other museums of history that we want to uh, expose our children to. There's a wonderful one down in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, that is set aside for those who had been lynched during the civil rights and before the civil rights uh, movement. Lynched. A amen. And we want in Jackson, Mississippi. We would. Amen. Amen. So we want to be able to let our children know just how far we have come. Amen. And if it's the, Lord, the Lord's will, uh, we will be looking at a trip to Washington, D.C., uh, to go to the Martin Luther King Memorial. Amen. To let them know you are the blueprint. Amen. For your future. It ain't about pulling your pants down and having your hair all kinds of colors. Respect yourself so that respect can come to you. You ain't the baddest Negro on the block. Amen. Amen. So we, we thank God for Sister Jasmine. Amen. And the things that she has in store for the youth of our church and for those of us who just want to go with them. Amen. Amen. So we amen. <laughs> amen. So we thank God. Amen. Continue to pray. Amen. For those who are on our prayer list. A amen. Remember that on next next month we have our 143rd uh, anniversary. I spoke to our our, um, our guest speaker, Bishop. Uh, uh, I know his name. Uh, <laughs> 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 
my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> Amen. But he's looking forward uh, to bringing some of his, his, his flock uh, with him to, uh, uh, to be here with us. Amen. And we're looking for a high time in the Lord. We're not back to where we used to be, but we're getting there. Amen. And if you are here, we'll be there. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. Thank God for your diligence and certainly your commitment and dedication. Amen. To the work of the ministry. And if all hearts and minds are satisfied, let us stand. Amen. God bless you. Most holy, eternal God, our Father, we thank you so very much for coming in the midst and being our guide, coming in the midst and being our God. Father, we pray now that as we prepare to leave this place, but never from your presence, go with us to Heavenly Father. Uh, cover us with your blood. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger as we might be able to come back here again on next week if it's the Lord's will to praise and to worship you forevermore. God, we thank you, we adore you, we lift you up. We magnify your name. Now we pray that the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, let it rest, rule, and abide, henceforth and forever. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you and have a blessed week.